would make this an especially meaningful conversation for you? Well, I'm just grateful for the opportunity, number one. And like, number two, I've been watching a lot of the things that you post. And I just want like more clarification because I know like I just took it September and it, it was just like a lot. It was like a lot, a lot. So I wanted to basically, maybe we could go over like some more LSAT um, games and things like that, because I know that was on the test a lot. Like I had two, but I don't know if it was experimental or not. So. Yeah, well, if you have two sections of logic games, then definitely one of them was experimental. There's only one score sections of, of games on the exam. And the September LSAT had especially difficult games. So. Yeah. I'm not surprised to hear that at all. You definitely want to focus on games moving forward. When are you taking the LSAT next? Are you retaking it in October or November? I'm going to retake it in February. And the only reason why it gives me more time, I haven't got my test scores back. That's mm -hmm. October the 15th. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. 14th to get it back. So it's like, I don't know exactly where I stand. Um, but I said, let me give myself more time to really get the score. that I, I only want to get 160. That's the only thing that I want to get. So it was like, well, let me get the scores and then we'll go from there. But I have been applying to um, different schools already and um, worked on my personal statement. Okay. So you're, you're not retaking until February. So you've got some time. Right. Exactly. I have some time. So it's like, I, I just want to make sure that whatever score I get, I still get like a little higher than what it is. And I know by the time February, I'm able to really nail it how I want to, even though I did Kaplan class, and I would tell people, just don't do a Kaplan class. For me, it really didn't get me where I needed to be. I had to hire a private tutor. Mm -hmm. So it's like people like you and some other people that are on different, like, websites. For me, Kaplan really didn't, like, seal the deal of, okay, you know, this is how you're going to do it. I would just tell anybody, just like of all things, like maybe they can hire like a private tutor, see you. But for me, Kaplan didn't really do anything but confused me even more. Well, I appreciate that. You know, thanks for sharing your experience. You know, they've got a lot of people out there and sometimes it makes sense to go with someone you, you know, have a more personal connection to. Like you've actually seen them specifically rather than going with a general company when you don't know the exact instructor you'll get. Exactly. Yeah. I just want to think about what we can do for you going forward for February with logic games. So um, if we can like have more logic games of all types, that way we'll know like which one is a hybrid, which one is straight sequencing, which one is distribution. Mm -hmm. Like that will work for me because number one, I don't like the whole game thing, you know, yeah. but it's like I have to force myself because I know it is a part of the test. So it's like, okay, well, what can we do to help students to realize, okay, this is a distribution, you know, um, I know it's like only like one minute a question, but how can we like actually get it and see it? Sure. All right. So one thing I would suggest for you, Rashida, is you, when you're doing games, when you're studying games, don't just do section after section of games. You can do games organized by game type. So you could do a bunch of ordering games in a row do a bunch of grouping games in a row so that you can better start to see the patterns. And you've got a lot of time between now and February. You've got four months. You could make anything happen. And there are nearly 100 released LSAT exams. Multiply, multiply that by four for the four games in each exam. You have nearly 400 games you could potentially study. Now, I know you said that you don't like games, but I would encourage you over the next few months, try to change your mindset around them because the people who do best on games, they find a way to like them. You know, they find a way to appreciate them. You'll do better on it if you like it and can find at least some satisfaction in it. Okay. And then another thing, like with the long paragraph, like it's just mind boggling sometimes because it's like, okay, we have to read all of this and get it done with that, like, like in a minute. How can we go about finding the answer that you need immediately? Like, how can I you know, pinhole on where I can find the main idea. Because sometimes it's not in the first passage. Sometimes it may be in the third or fourth. So how can we go about um, spending more, a lot of time for us reading and get to the questions immediately? Right, I hear what you're saying. So we're looking for what's the main point? What's the main idea? 
where does it appear in the passage? And oftentimes it does relate to the author's opinion. So if you see any opinionated words where the author is expressing some kind of viewpoint, if they're making a value judgment, if they're saying something like X should, or giving a, a tonal opinion on something like, like something, giving a value judgment, like something is good or something is bad or something was not critical enough or not skeptical enough, or they're qualifying it in some way. Like instead of saying all people, they say all people who take the LSAT, for example, limiting the grouping of what they're talking about, that could sometimes be an expression of the author's opinion as well. Okay. But it could appear anywhere, you're right. Usually it'll appear either towards the beginning or towards the end. Maybe last sentence of the first paragraph, first sentence of the second paragraph, or maybe in the final paragraph. And as an exercise, I would encourage you, spot the key sentence where they summarize that main viewpoint. Obviously, you might not always see it on the first go through, but mm -hmm. later during your review process, if you can highlight for yourself that key sentence, you'll find that that key sentence will often solve a couple of the questions for you. Okay, all right. And for, say for instance, I get a 150 um, on my score. Can I still, would you suggest that I go ahead and still apply to the schools that I'm interested in? Um, given the fact that, you know, everything else may be good, like my personal statement, definitely my recommendations, you know, my resume speaks well of itself by me being a federal government employee. I have years experience, you know, uh, managing and, you know, operating and being a facilitator of things and working on data reports. Like, is it the thing as far as scoring is concerned? So it sounds like you have an, it sounds like you have an impressive work background, which will certainly help your application. But the LSAT score is the thing. That is the biggest factor in the admission process. And so if you get a 150, depends on what schools you're looking at. If 150 is below, significantly below the median of accepted students from previous cycles, then you might be better off waiting. And I know you said you're applying already even before you take in February. Given that, are you considering applying next fall if this cycle doesn't happen for you? Absolutely, absolutely. If this cycle doesn't happen for me, then I will go ahead and apply for the next. Cool. Um, you know, given the fact that since February, you know, my scores will be different than what I've taken in September. Right. So it was just the fact that I wanted to meet the deadline for the um, JD applications. Right, I see. Okay, so in that case, if you would apply next cycle as well, then mm -hmm. February is not your last opportunity to take the LSAT. You've got four months, you can make a lot happen, and I certainly hope you do better than 150. I hope you get your 160. If you don't, though, you could still retake it in the summer or in the fall and potentially score higher. So this is not your last chance. Right, correct. All right, yeah. It was just basically like the gaming thing of how can we look and see, okay, this is a strict sequence in. I mean, it was just like rough. It was yeah. really, really rough. So I um, just wasn't sure of, you know, how can I go about looking at it? And I know I have to start liking it in order for me to, you know, get the points that I need to get. Yeah, yeah. So in on my website, LSAT blog, I actually have categorizations of the vast majority of released LSAT logic games. So they are organized by game type. And so if you want to get better at spotting what's ordering, what's grouping, what's matching, things of that nature, I have it all laid out for you so that you can do a bunch of one type, see the connections between them. Then when you look at a new game, you'll be able to better relate it to one of those specific categories. Okay. I would definitely look on your website for that. And with the... Um, and also with the assumption questions and things like that, like with the long paragraph, um, I should just like just keep playing around with it. That way I can find my main idea and what actually everything actually means with the passages. Well, so, yeah, so for the reading comprehension, I would suggest definitely for each passage, find the key sentence where they summarize the main idea, where they summarize the author's opinion. Because okay. there are patterns in the ways they express that. And it's obviously harder in reading comp because language is vast and complex, right? There's a lot of ways to describe things. And so yeah. it's your job to hunt and find that key sentence. And it's a matter of practice. That's all it is. 
but mm -hmm. as an exercise after you do a passage untimed during your review for every single question in a reading comp, not just the main idea questions, look for what the exact line references are, the exact line numbers are supporting the correct answer. There's always, the answer is always in the text. Sometimes obviously it's harder than others to spot it, but right. make that your job to spot it every single time, even if it happens later, because over time you will start to get it more and more during the timed conditions as well. Okay. I will definitely start doing that. Okay. So another thing, so say for instance, like there's one, like section one, say for instance, I didn't do all of this, um, the answers, I didn't answer all the questions, but I still did correct in those points. Is it possible that it could take away from the scoring? Because I'm not for sure if everybody can do all the answers in a 35 minute period. So should I answer the ones that I know, like I got this correct, like this is something that I know? Well, you should bubble in every single answer. There's no guessing penalty. So you should bubble in every single question with something at least. Okay. Now, obviously, if you don't attempt all the questions or you don't get to thoroughly evaluate all the questions, let's say that you ran out of time at question number 20, you should quickly bubble in the last five or so before the clock runs to zero. Okay. See, because that's what happened with one of my logic games. Like, I didn't get, I think I was like at 21. And it was like, boom. I was like, oh, man, I can't just like, and it's digital now. Right. And with me, I've been doing it for so long, since April, on paper. So I had to like do the digital. But it's like, it's for me, I just prefer it to be paper. Because mm -hmm. it seems as if you can just really look at things better when it's on paper ver versus on tablet. Just, I don't know, maybe that's just me. No, I get what you but, mean. There's definitely, there's definitely pros and cons to it. Yeah, yeah. It's, and then it was just like, okay... But when you actually have it in your face on paper, it's kind of like you can kind of go through and, you know, weed out. Yeah. I don't know, maybe it's just me, so. No, I, I see what you're saying. I, I didn't love adjusting to it either. And so what I would suggest is obviously make a lot of your practice going forward on the digital. LSAC has a few practice exams in the digital format, 71, 73, and 74. Yeah, I did so those could, as well. So you could practice those and go back through them again. And once the five minute warning pops up on the screen, that's when you want to bubble in anything that you were not, that you were potentially not even going to get to. So at least you have something entered in and you've got a one in five shot. Okay. All right. We'll do. I'll definitely do that. Well, this has definitely been informative for me and I'm going to go back and restudy again. Um, I know I have to take, I have to do my, the writing part. Now I know that's not counted, are, is that timed as well, the writing? It is. The, the LSAT writing, which is now digital, is 35 minutes, and you have up to one year to complete it after you take the LSAT. You're not doing it at the test center. You're doing it at home right. from your own computer. And because it's typed, law schools may look at it a little bit more than they otherwise would have because it's easier for them to read. But yeah. it's still not scored, still not a huge deal. They just want to see writing. They just want to see what your writing's actually like when you don't have the chance to edit it or have other people look it over. Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, this was definitely helpful. I'm glad and, to hear it, Rashida. And again, like I said, I've, I've been following you and I was like, you have done more help for me than Kaplan did. So if I would have known, I would have taken your classes, even though I'm here in the DC area, but I would have taken that instead of Kaplan. But who knows, I, I still may do it along um, as well with the, the private tutor that I have. So I appreciate that, Rashida. And by the way, my classes are online. They're live online. You can connect from okay. anywhere. Okay, great. I'm really glad great. we connected. What would you say is the biggest insight you got from our coaching call today? I would say that um, you definitely helped me with the reading comprehension and with the logic games of how to... Um, go about maneuvering or help me um, or ways of being helpful. Um, so you showed me that, and I, which I didn't know that um, it's usually like with the, with the reading comprehension, the author's opinion is in 
It may be in the middle, may the beginning, but you just have to look for it. And everything that you need is in the passage. I shouldn't overthink it, in other words. Nothing should be overthought. Everything I need is in the passage. I just have to find it. You got it. Perfect. All right, well, I'm glad we connected. Please keep in touch. Let me know if you need anything as you move forward. Will do. Thank you. Right. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.